This year I grew from about 35,000 to over 100,000 followers on Instagram, primarily due to my reel strategy. I just seem to land on the perfect balance between trendy reels and original reels. This concept of the two different types of reels has really informed my strategy that's helped me grow so much. And you may have seen me talk about it in this video. I went in detail about the strategy in this video, but today I wanna show you the actual tangible step-by-step -step process that I go through to create my reels, including planning them, coming up with ideas, filming, editing, and getting them posted. I'm gonna show you all of that today. So let's get into it. So as I mentioned, my strategy is made up of two parts, creating trendy reels and creating original reels. They both serve different purposes in your strategy and it's important to have a balance of both. Your trendy reels, which are going to be short, maybe seven seconds long, based on a trending audio, highly visual. You can think of these reels as the candy in your balanced Instagram diet, okay? This is like the stuff that everybody loves. It goes viral super easily, but if you have too much of it, it can give you a toothache. Original reels, these are your longer form, really high value videos, probably a little bit more in the style of a YouTube video, potentially talking head. These are not gonna be based on a trend, but rather based on your audience's interests and your own expertise. You can think of that as like the healthy, nutritious part of your Instagram content diet. I talked more about this in the strategy video I mentioned before, but I just wanted to lay that foundation because throughout this video, I'm gonna show you my two methods for creating Instagram Reels and they follow these two parallel paths. So I have a different process for creating trendy Reels and another process for creating original Reels. So I thought it's important to make sure we're all on the same page. So let's go plan our ideas. Honestly, this is a huge X factor when it comes to having a successful Reel. You need to come up with a good idea. I feel like I talk about this a lot, but honestly, you can't talk about it enough because way too many people are so focused on their hashtags, the time that they're posting, how many other people have used the audio before them because they think that is gonna be the difference between growing on Instagram and not growing on Instagram. My friends, listen, that is not gonna make the big difference. The big difference in whether or not you can see substantial growth on Instagram is coming up with really good ideas. So channel that energy that you used to put into hashtags, etc., into the planning phase. So here's how I come up with ideas. I keep a running database in Notion of all of my short form video ideas that just come to me in life. <laughs> you know, those shower thoughts or when you're out on a walk and you're like, that would actually be a really great video. Notion's got a mobile app. I also use it on my computer. So I'll just throw those ideas into this database. So when it comes time to actually creating stuff, I have a list already. That is more applicable to my original reels because it's the same kind of way I come up with ideas for YouTube videos. It's just like I might be inspired by something I see online, a conversation with a friend, whatever it might be. When it comes to the trendy reels though, that is something that I have to seek out a little bit more intentionally. And so I will scroll through the reels feed on Instagram and try to gather some like existing trends or audios that are doing well right now and choose the ones that feel actually authentic to me. Cause that's another common roadblock that a lot of creators can come to, especially when it comes to trendy reels, cause you try to fit yourself into the cookie cutter of the trend and it's not always a great match for you or your audience. So it's important to be discerning about which trends you actually do and make sure that it feels like authentic to you and your brand and your message. A lot of the trending reels that I do are not necessarily what we're used to thinking about as trending. Back in the 2020, 2021 era, it was all about lip syncing to like sound bites from the office or dancing around and pointing to stuff as it came up on screen. That's not as much the vibe on Instagram anymore. And so when I do trending reels, usually it's a lot more of just a song that's doing well right now, a bunch of different clips of like B-roll and then some like inspirational message on top or even some kind of prompt to read the caption for more information, that kind of thing. Those things are always gonna be changing though. Who knows, two years from now, we might have a different vibe of like trendy reels, but at the moment, that seems to be more so what's popular. Okay, so to recap, we get information just from being out in the world. We jot it down in our database, so we always have that to reference. You can spend intentional time scrolling 
to find new trends. I do recommend though, setting a bit of an alarm so you don't get caught up in the endless scroll that is the Reels feed. And finally, to get ideas, I will also look back through my Instagram metrics to see what content has performed the best for me in the past. And I'll try to pull out themes from those top performing Reels and determine what about that reel made it perform so well? And can I replicate that same topic, editing style, theme, whatever it might be to see the same success again? Using your metrics to guide your growth strategy is essential because it's the most direct way for you to determine what your audience does and doesn't engage with. And it can also be helpful to have a sense of what the industry standards are for your metrics. Which is where Dash Hudson's recent cross-channel benchmark report for 2023 comes in. And thanks to Dash Hudson for sponsoring this video. In case you're not familiar, Dash Hudson is my personal favorite platform for compiling and analyzing my social media metrics across platforms. As you can see, it's a very visual dashboard, which makes it very easy to interpret all your insights. When it comes to content strategy, here I can see my top performing reels from the past year. And I can ask myself, what about these reels made them perform so well? And whatever that answer is, I can lean more into that with my future content to hopefully see the same results. So Dash Hudson has compiled all of these metrics from top brands and they've put it together in this cross channel benchmark report, which you can download for free at the link in the description, by the way. You can read about the latest trends across all the major social media platforms and see what the average performance is for brands across several different KPIs. This is super helpful for understanding how your content is performing in the context of your niche and can give you a sense of what you might want to change about your strategy to improve. If you want to check out the report for yourself, like I said, you can download it for free at the link in the description. And thanks again to Dash Hudson for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so as I settle on the ideas that I'm excited about, that I want to create, I add them into my content calendar. I just open up my Notion content calendar and I can just hover over the date where I want to post this reel and I'll click the plus button. And if I scroll down here, I actually have templates for all kinds of different content that I create. So I'm just gonna click on reels and then I can fill out whatever info I want. So I can add whatever concept or title I have in mind to the title field. I can even select a content pillar. So I try to post like different varieties of content. So like maybe this is a strategy related video, for example. If you wanna use a content calendar like mine, but you don't have one set up yet, I've got you covered because I've got a free Notion content calendar template. I'll have that linked in the description for you to check out. Once I have my five reels for the week planned out on my content calendar, it's time to dive a little bit deeper and actually write the scripts for the original reels and plan out the shot lists or further go into detail about the concept for the trendy reel. What's involved in the scripting phase really, really varies depending on the type of reel it's gonna be. If it's an original reel, it's quite straightforward. I'm just gonna write the script because most of my original reels are just talking to the camera like this. I wish I had a word count estimate for you, but honestly, I just go off vibes. I feel like I've been doing this for a while, so now I'm just kinda used to like how long of a script I need to fill 90 seconds. Though honestly, I do frequently go over and then need to cut out stuff in editing to make it short enough. But the thing is you can Google word counts of how many words you need to fill 90 seconds and it's still gonna be different for everyone because it depends on how quickly you talk. And depending on the original reel, sometimes I will also include B-roll to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about. And I will include that as like a shot list category next to my script to remind myself what B-roll I need to film while I'm filming. That's fairly straightforward. Let's talk a little bit about how you can plan your trendy reels. Now, most of the time, these don't need a whole script because I'm not actually talking in them. So for these, I'm gonna determine what audio I'm gonna use because I already found that in my researching, right? I'll maybe write a few notes about what type of B-roll I want to include, but I'll just select that from my B-roll library later. And then if I want to have any specific text on screen or anything specific in the caption, I'll write that out now. So that's pretty much the formula. For trendy reels right now, you're looking at choose an audio, choose the visuals, choose the text that you want to put on top. And then in some cases you wanna add more value in the caption and then you can do that as well. Honestly, for me, filming is one of the fastest parts of this whole process. Trust me, if you are used to filming YouTube videos, filming reels is going to feel 
so easy because they're just really quick. It doesn't take you nearly as long because what you're filming is just literally shorter. So for my original reels, I just set up my camera on a tripod like this that allows me to mount my camera vertically. That's obviously really important. Of course, you could film these on your phone as well. My preference is just to use a camera, but it doesn't really matter. Then I just set my laptop up next to me so I can reference my script, but I, I keep it out of frame. And then I just deliver each line. As with filming YouTube videos, if I make a mistake, it's okay. I just pause. Go back to the beginning of my sentence and say it again. I'll cut it out later. And then when I'm finished filming all of the A roll, I go to my checklist of B roll that I need to capture and I film all of that as well. Now for trendy reels, I don't always need to film anything. In a lot of cases, I don't. Sometimes I will, like for example, lately I've been doing a lot of gear flat lays because I find that those perform well. So something like this where I'm showing like beginner YouTube setup or whatever. I did have to specifically film that, even though I would categorize this as a trendy reel, but it didn't really take that long because the entire video is like seven seconds. So anyway, depending on the type of trendy reel I'm trying to do, I will film some new footage for it. And every so often when I have a couple extra minutes and I've got my phone or my camera out, I will just film some B-roll of like me on my laptop, me filming like as if I'm vlogging, me setting up a tripod, these different things that are relevant to the type of stuff I talk about, I'll just quick film like a 10 second clip here and there and add it to my B-roll library. So this is typically where my trending reels creation process takes me, is to my library of B-roll that I've collected just over the last few months, last year or so. Okay, so if we look at my albums here, I've got a creator B-roll folder, I've got a travel B-roll, I've got Reels B-roll from 2022, that's before I separated it out into different categories. And then I've also got some photos and videos separated by different trips I've been on. So for example, if I'm trying to make like an inspirational Reel with like a quote about how you need to chase your dreams, don't ever stop trying, you know, whatever it might be, maybe I'll look in my creator B-roll folder and I'll find some clips of me, you know, taking photos of myself, or um, this one is me setting up my camera and filming, or this is me recording a podcast. So if you follow me for a long time on Instagram, some of these might start to look familiar, but that's why I've been trying to shoot new stuff more recently too. So that is primarily where I get my footage for my trendy reels, and I highly recommend you doing this as well because it makes it so much faster than if you were trying to record stuff new every time. Plus it just allows you to get so much more variety. So try to integrate grabbing B-roll for reels into just your everyday life. Like when you think of it, like grab that quick shot of you holding a camera, of you out for your walk, of you recording your podcast, whatever might be relevant. Just try to grab a short clip of it here or there, organize it on your phone. And then when it comes time to create your trendy reels, It'll be so easy. All right, we have made it. It is editing time. So once again, we have two different workflows depending on the type of reel we're talking about. So first, let's talk about original reels, which I just filmed on this little guy. So I'm gonna grab the SD card and get this footage onto my external hard drive because uh, that's what I edit all of my stuff off of, my YouTube videos, my reels. Keeps your laptop from getting cluttered. Usually what I do is I just make a folder for each week in my TikTok folder and then once I'm done with that week, I can just move that whole folder into my done folder. How many times can you say folder in one sentence? This is just how I like to organize it. Whatever works for you is good. And then when I do have a video where I have a few B-roll clips and I wanna keep everything together, I will just title it and then make subfolders. Again, within each weekly folder. Then we're gonna open up my TikTok content Premiere Pro project. I have everything in here, like my vertical B-roll that I have on my phone. I also have in this project, I have music that I use in the background. I've got sound effects. That way it is very convenient for me to edit in here because I've got everything that I need to kind of polish up a video. So I'm just going to go ahead and import that folder with the new clips. I'm not going to get into all of the nitty gritty details of editing here, but the basics are I create a new sequence with the clip that I just filmed 
And then all these little gaps here, these are pauses that I took between saying lines. So for example, looking at my laptop to review my script, or maybe I made a mistake, so I had to start over. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just go through and cut out all of those pauses. Then I actually start adding the creative flair, like titles, transition effects, background music, and all that stuff. Here's an example of what a finished Reels timeline looks like. You can see I have all of these clips cut up to take out any of the mistakes or pauses. I've added music. These are little sound effects. There's titles here. And then finally I have captions. Those are all the building blocks to kind of end up with a polished reel that I'm ready to post. I know that's a very surface level overview, but it would literally take like 40 minutes if I was gonna show you every single detail of how I edit my reels. And in fact, it did because in my course, the Instagram roadmap, I did exactly that. And it is a very long video. So if you want that, you can check out the course, but that kind of gives you a sense of how I go about editing my original reels. Now, when it comes to the trendy reels, I do tend to edit these on my phone because I always have my most up-to-date version of my vertical b-roll library on here and then I can just easily and automatically sync those clips to whatever audio I've chosen. A lot of people get caught up in the idea of like having to edit in the Instagram editor but honestly some of my biggest viral videos from 2023 were edited on my laptop and then just tossed in and posted on reels later so don't get too in your head about it. Really use whatever workflow makes this easy and fun for you. And don't worry about trying to like game the algorithm because truly it's just about coming up with good ideas. Here's an example of a reel that I edited just using the Instagram reels editor. All I did was imported this video and put it at 0.5 speed because I filmed it in 60 frames per second. And then I just added this text over top. Super easy. Here's another one that I did that with. All I did was split the clip a few times and then again, add text over top, set it to music. Let's just contrast that with this one where I edited it in Premiere Pro because I was trying to do captions. I wanted to add some B-roll. I've got this style of titles that I like to use a lot that it's obviously not available in the Instagram editor. So hopefully that gives you a sense of like, how they kind of look different, but it's also part of the same kind of look and feel of my brand. The last step of the process is to post everything. And you have a few options for how you'd like to do this. It just kind of depends on your own lifestyle and how good of a memory you have. <laughs> One way that I like to do this is just saving my reels as drafts and then setting myself an alarm or a calendar reminder to go back and post it on the day that I plan to. I don't get too concerned about posting at the exact same time every day. So I just have a to do list item in my weekly planner for every day that just says post your reel in TikTok. And so when the time comes, I'll just go to my profile, tap on the reels tab, and then go over to my drafts. And then as you can see, I've got a bunch scheduled already and I'll select whichever one I need to post today and press share. Otherwise, you can definitely use a scheduling platform. That's something I'd be more likely to do with my original reels, just because you don't have to worry about adding in the audio and stuff that's already baked into the edit. So you could use later, you could use like the meta schedule or whatever, and then it could automatically publish for you so you don't forget. So it really just comes down to preference on how you want to do this. The important thing is that you just stay consistent and use whatever method is going to help you do that. Because the thing is consistency really is the key to success on Instagram, especially if you want to see growth like mine. If you are struggling to stay consistent or you feel like you are doing everything that you're hearing about in these tips videos and you're still not seeing the views on your reels that you want or the increase in follower growth that you want, then you should check out this video that I made talking about some reasons why your reels might not be getting views. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having adventures and following your dreams and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.